The DTF hack with the pigment ink jet printer. We are finally putting it to the test today. We're gonna find out, will the pigment ink finally hold up to a wash test? Hi, I'm Crystal Ann. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my crafting tutorials. If you guys have been following along with my DTF hack journey, you guys know that we have tested out all sorts of different stuff whenever it comes to the sublimation printer as well as the inkjet printer. What we have found out with inkjet is that there is a black pigment ink and then the colors were actually dye ink and that's why we were losing the color and it was because of you guys that let me know what the difference was there. So I also got a recommendation from you guys that there's actually a pigment ink jet printer that is solely pigment ink. Then the mission was on and I was out there to find the most affordable pigment ink jet printer because of course we wanna keep this DIY friendly, right? We wanna keep it budget friendly. So I sought out the most affordable one that I could find and this is the one. You could definitely just Google research a pigment ink jet printer and find the most affordable one for you. I have linked this one down below. I actually found this one at Walmart but I've also put a link for Amazon. That one was a little bit more pricey but it was the next cheapest one that I have personally found. So let's go ahead and go over the supplies that you're gonna need for this project. So you're going to need a pigment ink jet printer. So you want to make sure that you're not using dye ink, that it's pigment. These are in individual cartridges, as you can see here, and you're just going to insert those. And I'll have those linked down below as well. You're going to need some DTF film. Now I have tested out both of these. This one right here is matte and this one has a gloss to it. And I've actually tried to feed these through using multiple settings from the matte settings, the glossy settings, regular settings, and I cannot get this to feed through without adding the paper. So if you guys have been following along, with my journey where I tape it onto a piece of paper, it works the exact same with this printer right here. Next, you're gonna need some DTF powder. So these are two that I can highly recommend so far. So I really like both of these and I'll have them both linked below. And then of course, a t-shirt of your choice. So the really cool thing about the DTF hack is it's gonna allow us to put it on cotton, you can put it on polyester, you can put it on canvas if you want to. So lots of really cool things. It gives you a feel, a really light feel of HTV in case you guys are curious about that. If you guys have ever played around with direct to film transfers, then you'll know what that feels like. You're also going to need some regular tape here. I've got some washi tape, crafters tape if you will. You could use painters tape, scotch tape. This is gonna be for taping on our paper and then we have some heat tape to help hold down our transfers because they don't have any sort of stick. For our designs, we're using Canva. If you guys have been following along, you guys know I like to use Canva to stretch that out and size it out before I print it. So we're gonna be using this design right here because these colors are gonna show us how they hold up through the wash and, and the color pop. So I wanted to find something with some vibrant colors. So we're gonna put this on a white t-shirt. I get that question all the time, like why do you use a lot of white? Well, whenever we do tests like this, you really wanna put this on a white t-shirt, but if you wanna put it on colors, you definitely could. But if you wanna see the real true, the best that it can do, you wanna do it on a white t-shirt. So what I'm going to do is this design right here on a gray t-shirt. Now, another question that I've been getting asked and we'll be touching in a video very soon is can you bleach t-shirts? And like I said, we're touching that one very, very soon. So you could definitely put this on like the soft, the Gildan soft colors, of like the orange one, for example, and we could bleach it and it would be so, so adorable. Now this design has a lot of black, so I thought it would be perfect if it's gonna hold up in the wash. We're gonna see that, that black stay true to itself, right? So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna go ahead and size these out. So I'm gonna grab a corner here and simply size it out as big as I can. I'm trying to leave a little bit of room here for my wheels to grab onto. So I'm gonna do that and we're just going to center. We're just gonna center it up just like that. So this guy is completely ready to go. Now, one thing that I've seen with the Epson, whether it's a sublimation printer that's been converted, I have seen a lot of questions on, what do you do about the wheel marks? How are you not having wheel marks? And so far with this Epson, I'm not having any wheel marks, but I will go over some tips and tricks when it comes to printing, because like I said, I did have to use the paper with the tape. And this guy in particular is a little finicky where you have to have your paper to get it to feed in correctly. So I wanna show you guys that today. So now that we are ready, we're just gonna go over to the share button. We're gonna hit download. And then I'm just going to print off the second page. So I'm gonna unselect and just select page two and then hit done. And we're simply gonna hit download. 
Next up, you should have something that looks like this. So the next thing that we need to do is mirror this because you guys know if you have a sawgrass, you're gonna have the option to mirror. So what you're gonna do is go up here to tools and then you're gonna come down here and flip horizontal. Now that we're ready to print, we're just gonna come up here and hit file and then we're gonna hit print. So you wanna make sure it's chose the correct printer, which mine has. And then I have mine set on the normal print settings. Like I said, I've tried glossy, I've tried matte, I tried so many different ones and what worked best for me was just the normal settings that come right out of the printer. It's eight and a half by 11 and it is plain paper. If you come right down here where it says layout, you're gonna click on that. And at that point, you're going to see where it says reverse page orientation. So you could actually turn that on so it'll always print in reverse. Now, before we hit print, we gotta prep up our film so it's ready to print. For this one, I'm gonna print it on that Yalmation. So I've got this here. You just wanna make sure it's in the correct direction. And then we're gonna take our paper here. And this is actually, I didn't do this on purpose, but this one is a little bit thicker, almost like a card stock. It's just what I had on hand. Um, so it's a heavier copy paper, if you will, but you could definitely use copy paper. But I wanted to mention that uh, because obviously I like to make sure you guys have all of the facts. All right, so you're gonna make sure that the top is lined up nice and straight. Now, for example, this one right here is actually a little bit longer. I took my paper trimmer and trimmed it down to the 11 inches because it is a four. So it's gonna be short on the sides a little bit and that's totally okay. So we're gonna take us a piece of tape enough to where it's gonna stretch from one side to the next. Then we're just gonna take our tape up here, just right up here at the top. I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna get down into my image. I'm gonna make sure that is good to go. And then carefully lift this up. We're gonna flip it. We're gonna take our tape and get it down. So you're gonna notice that I'm actually off here on my tape on the sides and I promise you it's gonna be okay. You should have something that looks like this. So you have your film on top, your paper, and then your tape. The way that we wanna load this in the printer is the paper side up and the tape side in. You're going to pull out your paper tray and I'm actually gonna bring it over here so I can show you guys. I'm actually gonna bring it up just a little bit because I wanna make sure you guys can see this. So there's actually this little foot back here and then you have this piece that's gonna move because this one will actually print the eight and a half by 14. So you wanna make sure that this is clicked all the way into your paper and that your paper is butt up against this piece here, but you wanna make sure it's not riding up on here. So when I first started to do this, I thought that this needed to be right here. So I wanna show you that. So I thought that it needed to be where it says letter because then I thought A4 was right here. I was having issues with it printing and it would pull it in and then it would only print like three fourths of the design and that's what it was. I needed to move this guy up. So this guy can be flush up against this. It just can't be writing up on the back because it does talk about that when you first set up your printer. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to set this guy right here. So I just wanna make sure that's nice and straight on top and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this in the printer. You're just gonna go ahead and push it all the way in until you hear it lock. So this guy is ready to go now. So we're gonna go ahead and hit print. Next thing, you wanna be totally prepared with your powder because this guy prints super duper fast and these inks are made to dry very, very quickly. So you wanna be ready to go. All right, there we go. So you guys can see this, check it out. I gotta work quickly. So I'm gonna leave the paper. We're gonna get our powder down, all right? And then we're just gonna go from one side to the next. All right, so we're just gonna make sure this guy is completely coated. So you can definitely make sure you go sideways and just get that guy all the way covered. And then, just like usual, we're gonna dust it off, knock off any excess, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and take our design here and as you can see, there is no wheel marks. I'm not having those issues. Now I will say by clicking the turn off the auto rotate and putting it on scale, it prints for me every single time. So if you're having issues and it's spitting it out and nothing's being printed on it, try those settings and see what happens. Now recently I've been having questions about saving the powder. I forget that I've just been doing this off camera and then telling you guys about it or I did it in the very beginning of the DTF pack. But yes, I save and reuse all of my powder. So what I do is I take it like this, just like I would if I was saving glitter and then I'll hover over this and just put it right back. Now, the one thing I will say about the Yalmation is it does come in this bag, so I do need to get a separate container for this. So for now, I just have it like this, fold it over, and then I'll have my tape, and I'll get that here in a little bit. So I'm gonna set this stuff out of the way.
When it comes to the DTF hack, you guys know, I've mentioned this several times, one of the things I can highly recommend is getting yourself a dust vacuum because it cleans this stuff up absolutely amazing. Look at this, perfect. It is just like working with glitter. This stuff goes everywhere. When it comes to curing your DTF transfers, you don't have to cure them. So let me go ahead and mention that right away. In the beginning of my DTF hack, I was not curing them because I was putting them directly on the t-shirt. As long as you're gonna go straight down, you have it hovered before you put it to the fabric, don't shift it, you're gonna be good to go. Now, if you're gonna be moving around, you definitely wanna cure them. If you're gonna save them for later, or if you're gonna ship them, you want to cure them. So it does not matter if you wanna cure them or not, I promise you, you're gonna get the same effect. When it comes to curing, there's a few ways to do it. We've showed several different tutorials here on the channel. We've actually used a griddle, which I love and highly recommend. You can find them while you're thrift storing. You may have one. I've seen a lot of comments down below where everybody was like, oh my gosh, I had one and I got rid of it. So check your garage, check your attic. You may have one of these guys laying around. Another thing is you guys had actually recommended you were using your Cricut Easy Press. So we're actually gonna do that today. We're gonna flip it over. You can use your bigger heat press. You're gonna heat up that lower flatten so that would work or you can actually use a heat gun as well so if you want to see that one I'll have that one linked above or down below for this you want to have your Cricut Easy Press or your heat press set at 300 degrees for 20 seconds now if you were doing the sublimation DTF hack you would want to do 385 for the curing and then you would want to do 300 degrees when it comes to press it the reason why we do not need the 385 is these are not sublimation ink so I don't need to activate them to get the colors to intensify so we can definitely do this at 300 degrees so we're not having to take our iron here and do it up and down. I do recommend maybe get yourself some heat gloves if you're afraid to touch this iron while it's hot and also do this at your own risk. I still highly recommend using the griddle. I think it's a lot safer with a pair of tweezers and your heat gloves, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it today. So we're gonna go ahead and take your handle and then you're just gonna very carefully flip it over just like that. So you do not wanna touch with your hands the bottom of this platen. Now we're gonna go ahead and cover this with a piece of parchment. I just wanna protect my Cricut Easy Press from any of those uh, powders, right? So now let's go ahead and start with the one that's been sitting here for about three hours. And so you wanna make sure you put the powders face up. So we're gonna drop this guy down. I like to kind of get that center going and we're gonna set it just like that. So you guys are gonna watch these colors come to life. If you guys have not already seen this DTF hack, it is amazing and it's a ton of fun. I love a good DIY project. I love to be able to hack some stuff. So if you guys like to do that, you guys are gonna absolutely love this. And so if you guys notice that you need help, like this is curling up, you can just take a pair of tweezers here and then hold that area down just for a few seconds. Now I will tell you, if you do it at the 385 or probably even like 320, 350, it will go a whole lot faster um, where this lower temp, it does take a little bit longer to melt the powders. Now that these are melted, you can simply just take your tweezers and then grab it off just like this and set it aside. Now we're ready for the second one. So the same thing, we're just gonna go right on top and let these melt. This one is almost done. So we're just gonna take the tweezers here and just kind of help it along. Same thing, we're gonna go ahead and take our tweezers and remove this. So as you guys can see now, these transfers are completely melted and ready to go. They are absolutely awesome, so let's prep up our t-shirt. Starting off with our white t-shirt, we're gonna go ahead and take our Cricut Easy Press, go right on top of the t-shirt where our design is gonna go to remove any sort of moisture and just smooth everything out. Taking our lint roller, we're just gonna remove any sort of lint or debris. Now let's go ahead and take that design. I'm gonna fold it in half just so I can figure out where the center mark is just kind of get a little pinch there and then we're going to follow the neck tag like we normally would and come down around four fingers we're just going to get that nice and straight and with this one we're going to use the heat tape because these are not sticky as if you were dealing with heat transfer vinyl you have that little bit of stick these have no stick so we're going to tape them down just like you would sublimation so we're just going to take a couple pieces of tape we're going to take a parchment paper cover that up go right on top and we're gonna hit go. So we're doing 300 degrees for 20 seconds. So we're gonna hold this guy down. Now, the one thing is to pay attention when you purchase your DTF film and powder because it could be a hot or cold pill. So you wanna keep that in mind. So if it's a cold pill, you can only peel it cold. We're gonna lift it up 
remove our parchment. This one is a cold pill, so we wanna go ahead and remove the pad from underneath because this is gonna retain heat. The next thing I like to do is flip it upside down on my granite countertop and just kind of smooth around the back and it's just gonna help cool it down faster. If you don't have granite or you don't have a cooling stone, it's gonna take around two minutes to cool down. Here we go, we're ready to test it out and it looks amazing. That is so, so cool. So far what I'm noticing with this is some distressing on the bottom color, this like teal blue color, if you will. I've got some distressing going on there and I got a little bit up here at the top. The black looks pretty good. So I'm gonna bring that up so you guys can kind of see these a little bit better. Bring it down so you guys can maybe see that. But I really, really love it. I think that came out so cute and it will be awesome to see how this one is gonna hold up in the wash. So you guys can see it. You guys let me know your thoughts so far. Do you think it's gonna hold up in the wash or do you think it's gonna wash out? Let me know in the comments below. Going in with the next one, we got our gray t-shirt here. We're gonna take that iron. I'm gonna do the same thing, just smoothing everything out, removing any sort of moisture. All right, so something about like that. And then we're gonna take our design here. We're gonna fold it in half, get another crease mark. And then we're just simply gonna go down just like this. If you need to use that lint roller, definitely make sure you do so. So I think this one's pretty good to go. So I'm just gonna skip it on this round. And so I think that is looking pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of that heat tape again. All right, now this one, I'm gonna give it just a little bit more pressure since we've lost some on that one. I'm not too sure what happened. We're gonna cover it with that parchment paper again. And then this one, I'm gonna go in with some heavy pressure or medium pressure, if you will. So I'm just gonna push down right here in the middle. All right, there we go. Now the other thing, as I was holding that, that one did set for three hours. So I wonder if you do have to cure these right away. So you know what we're gonna do? We're printing that guy again and we're gonna press it again just to see if this one doesn't have any issues. We're gonna do it because we're gonna find out. Same thing, I'm gonna remove the pad so we can go ahead and start to cool this guy down. I'm gonna flip it over and start to get all of that heat out of here. Here we go, moment of truth. So we're gonna go ahead and get it and peel. And it looks amazing. So you guys can kind of see this here. We've got everything off of here. I don't have any sort of distressing this time where I did last time. So I wanna test it out because the fact that it did set here for three hours, the reason why it did was my mom had showed up and I just shut the cameras down and I decided just to completely start from the beginning because I was already lost. And so um, I thought, you know what? It's a perfect way to set it aside and see what happens. So let's go ahead and print that one again. Before I do, let me go ahead and show you guys how awesome this one looks. I love it on the gray too. So I've been really loving these DTF hacks on the gray t-shirt. Look at how awesome this looks. I absolutely love it. And then we'll be able to see how those black colors hold up versus the colors. All right, so let's go ahead and print the other one again. We're going to find our placement. We're gonna take that parchment paper, cover the top, take our Cricut Easy Press, go right on top. We're gonna hit go. We're gonna give it some pressure right here in the middle. And then we're gonna find out the truth. All right, so here we go. We're gonna lift this guy out of the way. Now that we're cooled all the way down, let's find out if this was the problem. So we're gonna go ahead and peel. So I'm still getting some distressing. I got a little bit of distressing still in here. I don't know what is going on with this color. It's like the mix of the colors here. Um, I did not get it on the peach or the yellow, the black. It just, it's for some reason, it's still happening on there. So it's almost like I can feel it sticking to this, but I'm gonna show you guys really fast. I think it's the fact of how long it sat there before we actually cured it. So that is something to keep in mind. Just like I've done with the other DTF hacks, you will find the wash results in the very first pinned comment down below. And you'll also hear me talk about it during the premiere of this video while I'm over there in the chat. But if you guys are watching this on the replay and you're curious of how it held up, just check the very first comment. You're gonna see it's pinned by me and it will have those wash tests down below. Also, you'll see me wearing these in future videos and that's kind of what I've been doing as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. And if you guys are new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button as well as that notification bell down below so you guys don't miss any of my crafting tutorials.